Today is Tuesday of Holy Week, and today's Gospel reading from John 13 presents a scene from the Last Supper in which Jesus foretells the betrayal of Judas and the denial of Peter. Holy Week is a special week for us in the liturgical life of the Church. This Thursday, we will commemorate the Mass of the Lord's Supper, and I look forward to seeing many of you in person at Holy Trinity as we gather to pray together. However, today's readings help us to focus in on one aspect of the Last Supper narrative, the disappointment of Jesus' closest friends only hours before he suffers his passion. Stephen Sondheim captures this sentiment in the finale of Into the Woods. Sometimes people leave you halfway through the wood. Do not let it grieve you. No one leaves for good. You are not alone. No one is alone. First, the scene in John's Gospel describes the Passover supper gathering, a group of men who had grown very close to Christ. John's text describes the scene. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? The scene details this group of men reclining together with the one they had grown to know, admire, and love. Think back on our Sunday readings from the past weeks of Lent. After seeing him transfigured with Moses and Elijah, they descended the mountain shaken and confused. When they traveled with him to Bethany, did they also weep when they saw Jesus break down over the death of his dear friend, Lazarus. Lazarus, a man who was living with his sisters well into his 30s, certainly lived on the margins of first century Jewish society. When his sister Martha says to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I wonder if this could have been said of the apostles as well. What would their lives have been if they had not met Jesus. How many people live lives like they are dead, without identity, integrity, or purpose? These men, Peter, Judas, the apostles, Lazarus, who seemed eager for something more, left their fields, their fishing nets, their workaday lives for connection, and belonging in the company of Jesus. So after all they had been through together, how must they have felt when Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. This gospel reminds us that ultimately, we must walk our own journey of life and human development alone, albeit with the accompaniment of God. While we are fortunate to have the support of loving friends and family, we must ultimately take responsibility for facing our own trials. Jesus says to Peter, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. If disappointment comes through in the gospel, so too the vice of despair. It must have been demoralizing for Jesus and the other apostles to see Judas' betrayal and Peter's cowardice. I'm sure we have all asked ourselves at times if our work and effort will make any difference in the long run. I see this as a teacher. Will my commitment to this career really matter? And I've heard about a similar phenomenon in other professions. In your own career, doesn't it seem like your organization keeps addressing the same societal problems generation after generation with little significant change? Younger workers may think they will be the ones to transform their profession, but they soon find themselves pushing the same papers as the generation before them. Notice this line from today's first reading from Isaiah. 
Though I thought I had toiled in vain, and for nothing, utterly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, and my recompense is with my God. Here in Isaiah is the key to today's lesson. In the moments of our greatest frustration, self-doubt, betrayal, and even despair, it's important to remind ourselves that there is an ultimate reward greater than success with the immediate task. In fact, it's at the most difficult impasse that we gain the ability to work our greatest magic. It is at the moment that Judas leaves the supper to betray Christ that Jesus says, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. Those of us who are really trying to do the good work in our world will inevitably face disappointment and even betrayal. And it is at these moments that despite disappointment, we can claim the strength of knowing our mission, grounded in our true selves and deepest desires, and standing up for what we believe. In the words of Martin Luther, here I stand, I can do no other. When we exercise our agency, our conviction and courage, when we allow God's creative loving spirit to move through us, we gain the power to do great things, but not without risk. Later in the finale, Stephen Sondheim has the company sing, careful the wish you make, wishes are children. Careful the path they take, wishes come true, not free. Careful the spell you cast, not just on children. Sometimes the spell may last past what you can see and turn against you. Careful the tale you tell, that is the spell. This week in the church, we commemorate and celebrate the tale that Jesus told and the spell that God cast. The good news of glad tidings to the poor, liberation to the oppressed and vulnerable, and the ways we work our magic and bring this news to fruition through our own lives and noble work. At Mass, we will also commemorate the world's response to the good news in Christ's passion and death on Good Friday. As Christians, this is our wish, true but not free. Thanks be to God that on the other side of this dying, our integrity and endeavor find new life.